Um, just a small point about what you were saying about the equation of state parameter. So you were emphasizing that there's no evidence for it evolving, but the value, which uh, at least on your plot, that it was not evolving about, was actually not w equals minus one. It looked somewhat displaced from that. And so that is not gonna be good for just having a pure cosmological constant. So I think that's one point one has to bear in mind. It's not just the evolution, that's the actual value. Yes, but I, I think all the observations I believe are consistent with omega is equal to minus one. It's a question of whether you are looking at one sigma, two sigma, etc. And I have seen in the last 20 years these kinds of uh, red herrings come and go. So I'm willing to take a bet that 20 years down the line we will find that W is precisely equal to minus one. I have offered a $100 bet to several observers. Nobody has taken it so far. You're open for that. <laughs> And, and just another point, uh, in relation to most of the last part of your talk, of course that's all in the context of a flat cosmology. Um, so, I mean, even though we know yeah. that uh, omega total is very close to one, it, it only has to one. depart infinitesimally for you know, a non-flat cosmology to be the case. And then all your statements about lack of scales, other than, uh, you know, and basically most of what you're saying about A, doesn't really follow in that case. Yeah, it's yes and no. To be mathematically very precise, if I have a k not equal to zero, then I do get a scale out of it. But if you take any reasonable inflationary model and you inflate the universe to something like an e-folding time of 50, and you come up with that scale, that scale is so large or its inverse is so tiny that it materially doesn't affect these conclusions. For example, I can still take the V minimum and compute what it is, and I can compute the corrections due to that curvature term. I mean, you know this as well as I do because you did it for k not equal to zero. So uh, if you do that, you find that the statements which I mentioned about the V minimum being equal to one, it will be one plus or minus some 10 to the minus 10. Okay, if you make that kind of a uh, calculation, all the results follow, we have checked that out. Thomas Midler, um, I have a question, since there were a couple of other constants involved, like the gravitational constants and also the Stefan Boltzmann constant, how would this change if they va vary for an observer at a certain epoch? I'm not going to cover anything about the varying gravitational constants, probably Pedro would, I don't know. I haven't heard anyone talk about Boltzmann's constant varying with time. That would be an interesting thought, and most people would think that it is just because it is like you know, energy or temperature, which uh, it is just a scaling constant. But then there are other people who believe speed of light is a time dependent thing, where speed of light also you can say is a scaling thing as do you measure time in seconds, which is wrong, you should be measuring it in centimeters, okay? So, so I, I, it's an intriguing thought. I haven't, I haven't given any thought at all to Boltzmann constant varying with time. Um, let us uh, show our appreciation to Paddy and look forward to his return. Okay. <laughs>